Noah versus Yugi and Kaiba. It's the virtual world arc. Noah has sucked everyone into his virtual world. His goal is to definitively prove he is better than Seto by beating him in a duel and then maybe steal his body and then enter the real world. Spoilers, this doesn't happen. Instead, we get a 41 turn duel. The longest duel out of the entire franchise. Kaiba's gonna duel in the first half. Noah's gonna cheese a win and then Yugi's gonna take over and complete the latter part of the duel. Shenanigans, I know. But today we're gonna analyze if maybe Kaiba could have beat him earlier. Could Noah have won at any point in the duel at all? Or, you know, what could have happened in this duel difference? So, without further ado, let's jump in to the 41 turn duel. Before the duel begins, Kaiba chooses his Kaiser Seahorse as his deck master. Its deck master ability is, during Kaiba's turn, he can summon a light monster with one less tribute. A pretty reasonable deck master ability. Now do you want to see what power creep looks like? Or should I say, I make the rules, so I'm going to give myself the most busted deck master in the world. Let's take a look at Noah's Shinato's Ark deck master. Its effect is you can banish all monsters in both players' graveyards from play. Monsters sent to the graveyard after this effect activated are also banished. Monsters banished this way are equipped to this card whilst banished. When an opponent's monster declares an attack while you control no monsters, you can special summon one equipped monster in face-up defense for each face-up attack position monster your opponent controls. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not done yet. Once per each player's turn, you can remove any number of equipped monsters from the game to gain 500 life points for each. When this card is destroyed by battle, special summon Shinato, King of a Higher Plane, from your hand or deck. Technically, I haven't finished talking about its effects because when Shinato of a Higher Plane comes out, it has its own effects, so we'll worry about that bridge when we get to it. But for now, let's jump into the duel. The duel begins and Kaiba goes first. He draws, and his opening hand consists of Giant Germ, Vampire Lord, Ring of Defense, Quick Attack, Dragon's Rage, and Crush Card Virus. Kaiba starts by summoning his Giant Germ to the field. He then sets his Crush Card Virus face down and ends his turn. The plan, if Giant Germ is destroyed, Crush Card will send every monster with 1500 or more attack from Noah's hand and deck to the grave. It will then be unable to be used as long as Crush Card is in the grave. However, that would be too easy. Kaiba will never get this opportunity. It's Noah's turn and he draws. His opening hand consists of Shiron the Mage, Eris, Cyclone Laser, Matter Leveler, Ice Age Panic, and Earth Shaker. Noah summons his Shiron the Mage. He activates its effect, which lets him destroy one set card the opponent controls. He destroys Crush Card Virus. Noah moves into his battle phase. He attacks and destroys Giant Germ. Kaiba takes the first damage of the duel. However, Giant Germ's effect activates after being destroyed. It inflicts 500 damage to Noah and then summons another of itself from the deck. With no further plays, Noah ends his turn. It's Kaiba's turn and he draws Slate Warrior. He tributes his Giant Germ to summon Vampire Lord. He uses Vampire Lord to attack Shiron the Mage. It is destroyed, and since Vampire Lord dealt damage, its effect allows Kaiba to declare one card type, monster, spell, or trap. Whatever he declares, no one must send a card of that type from his deck to the grave. Kaiba declares monster, and so Noah sends Giant Soldier of Stone from his deck to the graveyard. Kaiba ends his turn. Completely unrelated, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. Cards like Vampire Lord, which let your opponent choose a card to send to the grave. Nowadays, that's a really bad thing because a lot of monsters have effect in the grave. So your opponent will be like, this is cool. I'll send this monster. This will help me next turn. And unfortunately, it kind of applies for this case. Kaiba has ultimately let Noah send a monster into the grave, which will benefit him later. So in the future, I wouldn't play Vampire Lord. It's back to Noah and he draws Fisher. He activates it straight away. With this, it destroys the lowest attack monster the opponent controls. Since Kaiba only controls one monster, Vampire Lord is destroyed. Noah follows this play by summoning his Eris. With nothing to stop him, Noah attacks directly. He ends his turn by setting Earthshaker face down. 
It's Kaiba's turn and he draws Ring of Destruction. The standby phase occurs and Vampire Lord's second effect activates. Since it was destroyed via a card effect, its special summons itself during Kaiba's standby phases. And so, Vampire Lord rises again. Kaiba follows this up by summoning his Slate Warrior. He enters his battle phase and attacks Aeris with Vampire Lord. However, Noah activates his set Earthshaker. Now, due to this card's effect, Noah declares two attributes. The opponent chooses one of those two and then destroys all monsters on the field with the chosen type. Noah declares Dark for Vampire Lord and Wind for Slate Warrior. Despite Vampire Lord having the superior attack, Kyber cleverly declares Dark. Vampire Lord is destroyed and Slate Warrior remains on the field. The reason that this was a smart play is because, yet again, Vampire Lord has been destroyed via a card effect, and so it will return back to the field during his next standby phase. Regardless of all this, Kaiba uses his Slate Warrior to attack and destroy Aeris. Kaiba ends his turn. Now you might ask, why didn't Kaiba set his Ring of Destruction and Ring of Defense combo here? And I don't know. Had he played these two cards face down in two more turns when Kyber attacks with his Spear Dragon, Noah's going to bring back Vampire Lord. Kyber could have used Ring of Destruction, destroy Vampire Lord, Noah takes 2,000 damage, and then Spear Dragon could have attacked directly. That all depends on if Shinato's art can activate its effect twice in the same battle phase. I don't believe it can because I guess he'd be declaring the attack, then he could use the effect so it's not another attack declaration. So, yes, Kyber could have won if he set his Ring of Destruction and Ring of Defense face down right here. Why didn't he? Dunno. It's Noah's turn and he draws Giant Flood. He immediately activates it. And this card is pretty nutty. Due to its effect, both players must send every monster card on their field and every monster card in their hand to the graveyard. Kaiba sends his Slate Warrior from the field. However, as he has no monsters in his hand, he doesn't discard. Noah, with no monsters on the field or in his hand, sends nothing. Following this, Noah activates his Deckmaster's ability. All monsters in the graveyard and all future monsters sent to the grave are now banished and become equipped to Shinato's Ark. This equipping effect is unique as it happens in the Banish Zone, so just pretend they're equipped to it all Spanish. What this also means is that Vampire Lord will no longer return to Kaiba's field during his upcoming standby phase. And so, Noah ends his turn. It's Kaiba's turn and he draws Spear Dragon. He summons Spear Dragon and uses it to attack directly. However, Noah activates the second effect of his deck master, which lets him summon one of those equipped banished monsters to the field into defense. He summons back Kaiba's Vampire Lord. Why didn't he summon Giant Soldier of Stone, which has 2000 defense? No idea. The attack continues. Vampire Lord is destroyed. However, due to Spear Dragon's piercing effect, it deals battle damage still. However, as a result of attacking, it switches itself into defense. Note, this will be the last time I mention it again. Vampire Lord has been destroyed by a battle. It's gone back to the grave and it's been automatically banished. Anytime anything gets sent to the grave for whatever reason, just assume it's been banished and equipped to Noah's Deckmaster. Anyway, Kaiba yet again ends his turn without setting his Ring of Destruction and Ring of Defense face down. It's Noah's turn and he draws Giant Rex. He summons it to the field and attacks the defense position's Spear Dragon. Noah ends his turn. It's Kaiba's turn and he draws Pot of Greed. He activates it and draws two new cards. He gets Different Dimension Dragon and Thunder Dragon. Kaiba starts by activating the effect of his Deck Master. Now he can summon a Light Monster with one less tribute. With this, he summons his Different Dimension Dragon into defense without a sacrifice. He then sets three cards face down. Ring of Destruction, Ring of Defense, and Dragon's Roar. Kaiba ends his turn. It's Noah's turn and he draws Deepest Impact. He activates it straight away. And now due to its effect, all monsters on the field are destroyed and both players' life points are cut in half. As the effect of this resolves, we see that Different Dimension Dragon wasn't destroyed. This is because its effect makes it immune to destruction by cards that don't specifically target it. Following this play, Noah activates his Ice Age Panic Spell. This card can only be activated while he controls no monsters, and with it, he can special summon one Earth monster from his deck. He summons Last Tusk Mammoth whose effect makes it so that the opponent takes any battle damage you would have taken from battles involving this card. 
With this in mind, Noah attacks Different Dimension Dragon. If this is successful, Kaiba will take 700 damage. And with only 700 life points left, Kaiba will lose. Luckily, he activates Ring of Destruction, which destroys Last Tusk Mammoth and inflicts the attack points of it to both players. However, since Kaiba has Ring of Defense face down, he activates it to reduce all damage he would take to zero. With no plays left, Noah ends his turn here. It's Kaiba's turn and he draws Polymerization. He starts by switching Different Dimension Dragon into attack. He then activates Thunder Dragon's effect by discarding it to the grave. He can add two more copies of itself from the deck. Following this, he plays Polymerization, fusing the two Thunder Dragons in his hand together to make Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon, which, important to note in the anime, is not a Thunder Monster. It's a Dragon type. This will become very important later. Kaiba activates Quick Attack. This allows Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon to attack the turn it is summoned. The reason he has to do this is because Battle City rules are sort of applied here, so Fusion Summon Monsters can't attack the turn they are summoned, unless you have Quick Attack. As Kaiba declares an attack on Noah, Noah uses his deck master ability. Since Kaiba controls two attack position monsters, he can summon two of the banished monsters. However, Kaiba reveals his final card, Dragon's Rage. With this card in play, all dragon type monsters can now inflict piercing battle damage for the remainder of the turn. And this is where things get really weird. Despite the fact Noah only has 600 life points left, Kaiba attacks first with his different dimension dragon. Giant Rex is destroyed and Noah's life points slip to a mere 400. Why didn't Kaiba just attack with the twin-handed thunder dragon? He would have won straight away. I can only assume one of two situations. One, He's checking for any problematic cards. Attack with a weaker monster first. Maybe there's something. I mean, there isn't anything, but I guess there could have been. Or two, maybe he's just BMing. He's just flexing on the opponent. I don't like either one of these answers. I wish he would have just attacked with Twin Thunder Dragon, because now he's going to backfire on him. Before Kaiba can attack for game with Twin Headed Thunder Dragon, Noah summons a mind controlled Mokuba and places him in between himself and Kaiba. He tells Kaiba to make a choice. Continue the attack and hurt Mokuba. Or stop the attack and move closer to defeat. Ultimately, not wanting to risk the safety of Mokuba, Kaiba chooses not to attack and doesn't win the duel right here. Kaiba reluctantly ends his turn. But hold on one gosh darn minute. Shenanigans. I mean, obviously. But I want to talk about the word hypocrite. The word hypocrite is defined as someone who does something that they have prior criticized someone else for doing. So with that in mind, we have just seen Noah use Mokuba as a hostage to cheese a win. Let's just call this what this is. It's cheating. Now, what does Noah say to Johnson in his duel against Joey? So what's all this about? He's robbed Kaiba of the win. Noah won't have achieved an absolute win because he's had to use nefarious tactics to get the win. So, I don't know. I It's a weird thing. He gets called out for it, like, at the very end of the duel. Kaiba, honestly, you should have won this duel. But then again, you probably should have attacked with your Thunder Dragon first or set your Ring of Destruction or Ring of Defense a couple turns ago. So, oh well. Anyway, the duel continues. It's Noah's turn and he draws Dark Hole. How many field wipe cards does Noah have? My goodness. Noah starts by activating the third effect of his deck master. Now by permanently removing from the game every monster attached to Shinato's arc, he can increase his life points by 500 for each. Since there are 12 monsters, two giant germs, one Shiron, one Eris, one vampire lord, three thunder dragons, one giant rex, one last tusk mammoth, one spear dragon, and one slate warrior. After regaining life points, Noah activates his dark hole. This destroys all monsters on the field except for different dimension dragon. Now with giant soldier of stone and twin headed thunder dragon sent from the field to the grave, they are now equipped to Shinato's arc. And with no monsters to summon, Noah ends his turn. It's Kaiba's turn, and he draws a mysterious card that will never be seen, it will never be used, and will ultimately get discarded. However, based on Kaiba's reaction, 
It doesn't look like a good card. Kyber switches different dimension dragon into defense and ends his turn. It's Noah's turn and he draws Gradius. He summons it to the field. Now, finally with Gradius, he can equip the Cyclone Laser and Matter Leveler equip spells he's had since the start of the duel. With these two cards equipped, Gradius gains 300 extra base attack as well when it declares an attack against the defense position monster. It will deal piercing battle damage. However, when it does this, it will change its attack to be 100 more than the defense of the monster being attacked. I'll just simplify that right down for you. If Gradius attacks a defense position monster, it'll do 100 damage. Okay? Okay. And so Gradius attacks different dimension dragon. Kyber takes 100 damage. Of course, Dimension Dragon isn't destroyed though. Noah ends his turn. It's Kyber's turn and he draws last turn. Despite the fact he actually has a win condition in his hand, Kyber ends his turn. What do I mean he has a win condition in his hand? Well, Yami Yugi will reveal this later. But basically with last turn and different dimension dragon on the field, Kaiba has a monster that is incapable of being destroyed. And so it's possible Kaiba could have won the duel. But the question then becomes, why didn't he play this card? Well, it's because Kaiba is holding back. Why? Because he needs to get Mokuba unbrainwashed back to his side and then he can go for game. However, ultimately what we're going to see is Kaiba sacrificing himself so he can get Mokuba back. We'll talk about it when we get to it. It's back to Noah, and he draws Gradius Option. Due to its effect, since he controls Gradius, he can special summon it to the field. With Gradius Option on the field, it gains the original attack and defense of the original Gradius. And not only that, but it gains all the effects of the equip cards attached to it as well. However, if Gradius is removed from the field, this card is destroyed as well. Noah enters his battle phase. He attacks with Gradius and it deals 100 damage. Gradius option then attacks, dealing another 100 damage. Noah ends his turn. It's Kyber's turn and the penultimate turn of his duel. With all of his strength and resolve to save Mokuba, he draws his ace monster, Blue Eyes White Dragon. With this card in hand, Kaiba sets his last turn face down. He activates his Deckmaster's ability to summon Blue Eyes White Dragon with one less tribute. He sacrifices his different dimension dragon in order to summon it. With Blue Eyes on the field, Mokuba returns to his senses and stands by Kaiba's side. Kaiba, free from holding back, unleashes his Blue Eyes White Dragon and orders it to destroy the original Gradius. Since Gradius was destroyed, Gradius option destroys itself. Kaiba ends his turn. It's Noah's turn and the final turn of his and Kaiba's duel. He draws and gets a mysterious card that will never be seen or used and is basically about to be discarded. Noah activates Shinato's Arc's third Deckmaster ability. He removes all monsters attached to it from the game and in return gains 500 life points for each. This time, there are five monsters attached. Giant Soldier of Stone, Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon, Different Dimension Dragon, Gradius, and Gradius Option. It is here where Kaiba activates his set last turn. Both players must now send every card in their hand and on their field to the graveyard apart from one card. Kaiba chooses to keep his Blue Eyes White Dragon, while Noah chooses his Deckmaster, which moves itself to the field. Noah and Kaiba both send their one mysterious cards in their hand to the graveyard. Now what will happen is both monsters will battle each other. However, there is no battle damage. Instead, the player whose monster remains alone on the field at the end phase of this turn will win the duel. Any other case results in a draw. Blue Eyes White Dragon proves to be the superior monster. With two win conditions met, Noah's deck master being defeated, and when the end of the turn happens, last turn's criteria has been met, this should spell absolute defeat for Noah. However, the final effect of Shinato's arc kicks in. When it is destroyed, it summons out Shinato, king of a higher plane, to the field. Due to the rules of deck masters, which I cover quite well in this video here, the new monster becomes the new deck master. And this is me just assuming here, but I guess since it's also called Shinato, this is why last turn thinks Shinato is still on the field. It's not, that shouldn't work like that, but this is the anime, remember? Technically, Shinato is still on the field. A second battle occurs. Shinato, king of a higher plane, attacks and destroys Blue Eyes White Dragon. The end phase occurs, and since Blue Eyes is no longer on the field, 
Noah wins the duel. And as a result, the Kyber brothers are turned to stone. Now let's be honest, I've had to jump through a few hoops to explain the shenanigans away there. I do think it was shenanigans. The deck master still being on the field, I think is fine, but that still being a Shinato, even though it's Shinato Zark, I don't know. Let's just assume that it has in its card text, this monster is treated as Shinato's Ark or something. I don't know, that's as good as it's gonna get. Regardless, Yugi steps up to the field. Yugi calls Noah out in two different ways, depending on if you watch the double the sub. In the dub, he calls him a hypocrite, and rightly so. In the sub, he reveals Kaiba could have won had he not summoned Blue Eyes, and instead used his different dimension dragon, since it can't be destroyed. Now, I don't know if this is a translation error, but winning is a strong word. What I think he meant was he could have got the duel to finish in a draw, because different dimension dragon, it's only got 1,400 attacks. So what would have happened is that monster would have stayed on the field regardless of what it battled. And so the duel would have ended with both of the last turn monsters being on the field. And so it would have been a draw, which would have been good. If you wonder why Kaiba didn't do this, it's because he needed to get blue eyes on the field to bring Mokuba back to his senses. Essentially, Kaiba purposefully threw the duel to save his brother. Can we fault him for this? I guess we can't. Anyway, Yugi mixes his deck with Kaiba's. He keeps Kaiser Seahorse as his deck master. He retains the same amount of cards Kaiba had in his hand, which was none, and even keeps the life points. So he only has 400. With these conditions met, Noah accepts the duel. However, not before changing his deck to counter Yugi's strategy deck. However, since Yugi's deck is a mix of Kaiba's power deck and his strategy deck, will it be enough? Let's find out. It's Yugi's turn, and he draws Gazelle, the King of Mythical Beasts. With literally no other options, he summons it in defense and ends his turn. It's back to Noah. If he draws a monster, he wins the duel. However, he fails. Instead, he draws Spring of Rebirth. Noah enters his battle phase and destroys Gazelle with Shinato, King of Higher Plane. It is here that Noah reveals his deck master's first and second abilities. Whenever Shinato battles a defense position monster, the opponent loses half their life points. Following this, the second effect kicks in. Whenever the opponent loses life points, Noah gains that much as well. And so, Yugi's life points decrease, while Noah's increase. Now, I think this is a perfect time to bring up Noah's obsession with gaining life points. It seems to be part of his deck's mechanic. Get loads of life points because he's going to start playing some spirit monsters. So he's not going to have any defenses. So he needs to be able to tank some damage. However, I think there's a thematic reason why he's doing this. Because he's trying to bring himself back to life, right? He's trying to enter the real world. So I think gaining life points is kind of symbolic of that. And the ultimate irony of this is his fixation of gaining life points, trying to revive himself, is actually going to be his ultimate downfall. We'll get to that literally at the end of the duel, but keep the life point thing in mind. You'll notice it. It's back to Yugi and he draws Obnoxious Celtic Guardian. He sets it in face down defense and ends his turn. It's Noah's turn and he draws Yatagarasu. If you don't know the really broken ability that this card can do, if Yatagarasu attacks Yugi directly, Yugi can't draw any cards in his next turn, which is very, very bad, and the reason why this card got banned for a very long time. If Yugi's got no cards in his hand, like he does, Yatagarasu attacks, Yugi can't draw in his next turn. So what will he have to do? He'll have to end his turn. Back to Noah, Yatagarasu attacks, can't draw, end his turn. So it's just a vicious cycle. It's a you-can't-win situation. So not fun. You can see why it was banned. Anyway, Noah summons it. He attacks first with Shinato. However, it is revealed that Yugi's face down is Obnoxious Celtic Guardian, who can't be destroyed by monsters with 1900 or more attack. Rather annoyed, Noah ends his battle phase. He activates his continuous spell, Spring of Rebirth. Now, every time a monster returns to the hand, Noah gains 500 life points. This is perfect as Noah is now going to play spirit monsters for the rest of the duel. What's a spirit monster? It's just like a sort of type of monster, which can't be special summoned under any circumstances and during the end phases, it will return to the hand. So yeah, Noah ends his turn, Yatagarasu returns back to the hand, Noah gains 500 life points, and the turn ends. It's Yugi's turn, and he draws one of Kaiba's cards, Cyberjar. He sets it face down, and ends his turn. Weird fact, Yugi makes a note that this is one of Kaiba's cards, so that's why I said it, right? However, the closest we ever see Kaiba using this card throughout the entire franchise is when a computer using his deck 
played it against him. Kaiba never uses this card, weirdly enough. However, you know what's weird? Yugi actually put this card in his deck during Battle City. We see it right there. There's no point to all this. I just thought it was an interesting fun fact. It's Noah's turn, and he draws another spirit monster, Asora Priest. He summons it and uses it to destroy Obnoxious Celtic Guardian, since its attack is less than 1900. Asora's effect then kicks in. It can attack all monsters the opponent controls once each. And so, Asora attacks Yugi's set card, which is revealed to be Cyberjar. Cyberjar's flip effect then activates. When flipped, it destroys all monsters on the field and then lets both players draw five cards. Then any level four or lower monsters drawn are special summoned to the field. Regardless though, Noah's deck master is about to be destroyed. This would cause him to automatically lose the duel. However, this is where Noah reveals the final deck master ability of Shinato King of a Higher Plane. Basically, if a card would affect this monster in any way, he can return it back into the deck master's zone. However, luckily, it can't come back to the field now throughout the rest of the duel. So, with Shinato permanently removed from the duel, Asura and Cyberjar are both destroyed. Both players draw five new cards. Yugi gets Sangan, Gamma the Magnet Warrior, Dark Magician, Dark Magic Ritual, and Valkyrion the Magna Warrior. Due to Cyberjar's effect, Sangan and Gamma are summoned to the field into defense. Noah also draws five new cards. He gets Seabex Blessing, Otahime, Great Long Nose, Pyro Clock of Destiny, and Yamata Dragon. However, since all the monsters Noah drew were spirit monsters, their effects prevent them from being able to be special summoned to the field. And so, with no further plays, Noah is forced to end his turn. It's Yugi's turn, and he draws Swords of Revealing Light. Yugi starts by attributing both the monsters on his field to summon Dark Magician. Since Sangan was sent from the field to the grave, its effect lets Yugi add a monster with 1500 or less attack to his hand from his deck. He adds Big Shield Gardener. Yugi then attacks Noah directly. It's Noah's turn, and he draws Next World. He activates it. Now, by targeting a monster Yugi controls, he can summon a monster of the same level without tributing. He chooses Dark Magician, and so, Noah summons out his level 7 Yamato Dragon without any tributes. Noah attacks Dark Magician. It is destroyed. Yugi receives damage, while Noah's life points increase. As Noah ends his turn, Yamato Dragon returns to his hand due to the Spirit Monster effect. However, as it does, Spring of Rebirth increases Noah's life points. Yamato Dragon, do you know what its effect is by the way? If it deals battle damage, Noah gets to draw until he has 5 cards in his hand. Why does this matter? Well, he had seven cards in his hand. He played his spell. He summoned Yamata Dragon. So he had five cards. So he couldn't draw. But what he could have done is set his Pyro Clock of Destiny face down. Set his Seabex Blessing face down. And then draw two cards when he attacks. This meant he would have got to some of his later cards a lot earlier. So it could have made a very different duel. Misplay Noah. Anyway, it's Yugi's turn and he draws Karibo. Yugi activates his Swords of Revealing Light. Now, Noah can't attack for three turns. I bet Yugi wish he activated that last turn now. Oh well, I guess. Yugi summons Karibo in attack and attacks Noah directly. Yugi ends his turn. It's Noah's turn and he draws a second copy of Otohime. He sets one of his Otohimes face down and ends his turn. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Dark Magician Girl. Yugi could go on the offensive here by summoning Dark Magician Girl. However, he decides it's too risky with how low his life points are. Instead, he makes the defensive play, followed by switching Karibo into defense. Yugi ends his turn. It's Noah's turn and he draws Maharaji. He sets his Maharaji face down along with his Pyro Clock of Destiny. After this, he ends his turn. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Nutrient Z. He sets it face down and ends his turn. It's back to Noah and he draws Vessel of Illusion. He activates his set Pyro Clock of Destiny. Due to this card's effect, a turn is skipped, returning back to the same point of Noah's turn. Now, since three turns have passed, Swords of Revealing Light ends. Noah flip summons his Otohime. When Otohime is normal or flip summoned, its effect activates, allowing Noah to switch Karibo into attack position. Noah tributes his two monsters to summon Yamato Dragon. Yamato Dragon attacks Karibo, attempting to go for game, but Yugi activates Nutrient Z. This increases his life points by 4000 before damage calculation can occur. Karibo is still destroyed of course, however with 4100 life points, 
Yugi survives the battle. Since yet again, Noah doesn't have less than five cards in his hand, he doesn't draw for Yamato Dragon's effect. What a waste. And despite Noah already gaining life points from his deck master, he chains his quick play spell, Seabex Blessing. This lets him gain life points equal to the battle damage Yugi just took. As Noah ends his turn, yet again his spirit monster, Yamato Dragon, returns back to his hand. Spring of Rebirth grants him another 500 life points. It's back to Yugi, and he draws Alpha the Magnet Warrior. He summons it into attack, and uses it to attack directly. Yugi ends his turn. It's Noah's turn, and he draws Inaba White Rabbit. He summons it and immediately enters his battle phase and attacks. Due to Inaba's effect, it can attack directly. The attack is successful. Yugi loses life points, while Noah gains the same amount. As the end phase occurs, Inaba returns back to the hand. Noah gains 500 life points. It's Yugi's turn, and he draws Dark Renewal. He sets it face down, and then tributes his Alpha the Magnet Warrior to summon Dark Magician Girl. Since Dark Magician is in his grave, Dark Magician Girl gains 300 attack. Yugi attacks directly with her, and ends his turn. It's back to Noah, and he draws Chaos Barrier Field. He summons back Inaba White Rabbit. However, as he does, Yugi plays Dark Renewal. Now he can send both it and one monster he controls to the grave in order to special summon one spellcaster monster from his deck or grave in order to summon back his Dark Magician. As he does, Dark Magician Girl's attack returns to normal. Noah sets Chaos Barrier Field face down and ends his turn. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Magician of Black Chaos. He activates Dark Magic Ritual. Tributing his Valkyrie on the Magna Warrior, he ritual summons Magician of Black Chaos. Yugi attacks, however Noah activates his set Chaos Barrier Field. This card forces the opponent's highest attack monster on the field to attack the opponent's lowest attack monster on the field, and after doing so, the battle phase ends. It's Noah's turn and he draws Groundbreaking. Noah sets his second copy of Otohime, along with Vessel of Illusion and Groundbreaking face down. Noah is even so assured of his victory, he shows Yugi the Groundbreaking trap he sets. A silly move for sure, however ultimately showing his opponent this card, not going to cost him the duel at all. But what is going to cost him the duel is when he activates it. Let's take a look. It's Yugi's turn, and he draws Card of Destruction. Noah, without any hesitation, immediately activates Groundbreaking, which lets him add one spirit monster back to his hand from the grave. He adds back Inaba White Rabbit. Yugi, knowing he will use that monster to attack him directly on his next turn, activates Card Destruction, which forces both players to discard their entire hands and draw the same amount they discarded. Since Yugi's hand is empty, he discards and draws nothing. While Noah, on the other hand, discards four cards. Inaba White Rabbit, Yatagarasu, Great Long Nose, and Yamato Dragon. The four new cards he draws are Hino Kagu Suchi, Flaming Fist, Spiritual Energy Settle Machine, and one mysterious card that will be discarded during Noah's next end phase. So, my question then becomes, why didn't Noah just wait till his turn? What a weird time to activate a card. Honestly, there's no reasons I can think of why he couldn't have just waited for his turn. So, huge misplay Noah. Had you just waited, you'd have won the duel. Anyway, Yugi moves into his battle phase. He attacks Noah's set monster. It is revealed to be a second copy of Otohime. Since Otohime was flipped face up, its effect switches Dark Magician into defense, preventing Yugi from attacking again. Sad fact for Noah, if he didn't switch Dark Magician to defense here, next turn he's going to draw Change of Heart. He could have used Change of Heart to take control of Yugi's Black Magician of Chaos, use Black Magician of Chaos to attack Dark Magician, and would have won the duel. But he didn't know he was going to draw Change of Heart, so hindsight, right? Following this, Noah activates his face down Vessel of Illusion. This special summons a spirit token with the same level, type, attribute, attack, and defense as the spirit monster just destroyed. Since it was Otohime, the token only has a mere 100 defense and zero attack. Yugi ends his turn. It's Noah's turn, and the penultimate turn of the duel. He draws and gets Change of Heart. He activates it and takes control 
of Dark Magician. Noah tributes Dark Magician and his spirit token to summon his Hinokagu Suchi. He then activates Flaming Fist to increase the attack of Hinokagu Suchi by 200. And it makes it so that if ever it deals damage, Noah's life points increase by 500. With a 3000 attack monster, he attacks and destroys Magician of Black Chaos. Yugi, with only 300 life points left, takes 200 damage and only has 100 life points left. Noah's life points increase from the damage, along with Flaming Fist's effect. Anyway, Noah moves into his main phase 2 and activates his Spiritual Energy Settle Machine. Now, any and all spirit monsters do not have to be returned to the hand during the end phase. However, to keep this card in play, he must discard a card during each of his end phases. Noah ends his turn and discards the mysterious card. It's worth noting, at this point in the duel, Noah has turned all of Yugi's friends into stone. Yugi only has 100 life points left and is pretty much on the verge of giving up. However, through the power of friendship, he prevails and is able to draw the final card of the duel, Card of Sanctity. He activates it. This allows both players to draw until they have six cards in their hand. Yugi and Noah both draw six cards. Yugi draws Monster Reborn, Polymerization, Blue Eyes White Dragon, another copy of Blue Eyes White Dragon, Quick Attack and Defusion. And what does Noah draw? It doesn't matter. It's not going to help him. Yugi goes for his final play. He activates Monster Reborn, bringing back Kaiba's Blue Eyes White Dragon, which was never actually banished since it was destroyed after Shinato's arc left the field. Yugi plays Polymerization to fuse the Blue Eyes on the field with the two in his hand to summon out Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Yugi activates Quick Attack to allow Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon to attack on the same turn it's fusion summoned. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon attacks and destroys Hino Kagu Suchi. Yami then uses Defusion to return the three Blue Eyes used for this monster's summon back to the field. Now, with a combined 9,000 attack, all three attack directly. Noah Kaiba loses the duel. And with that, that was the 41 turn virtual world arc duel between Yugi, Noah, and Kaiba. I don't feel like there's anything else to say. I feel like we're all done here. I'm pretty tired. Thank you very much for watching this video. Catch you all later. Bye everyone.